Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Dhabiya Palace. The cabinet highlighted the importance of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's address, delivered by the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa at the 146th Interparliamentary Union Assembly and its related meetings held in Bahrain under the patronage of His Majesty. The cabinet expressed pride in the IPU choosing Bahrain to host the largest and oldest international parliamentary gatherings and commended the efforts of the Shura and Representatives Councils, the National Organization committee and the relevant authorities on the success of hosting this important international gathering in preparation for the upcoming blessed month of Ramadan His Royal Highness called for doubling the financial support for eligible individuals on social security and disability allowances and directed the Ministry of Social Development to disperse the financial assistance in light of a memorandum submitted by the ministerial committee for financial and economic affairs and fiscal balance the cabinet reviewed the urgent plans and procedures which were implemented by relevant authorities following the directives of His Royal Highness to stabilize the prices and availability of commodities to account for changes in global markets. The cabinet decided to extend fee waivers for industrial lands allocated for food storage facilities for an additional month. The period of suspended fees will now span four months. His Royal Highness directed the Ministry of Industry and Commerce to intensify inspection campaigns to monitor the stability of prices. The inspections are designed to ensure the abundance of consumer goods ahead of the holy month of Ramadan. The cabinet welcomed the joint of tripartite statement by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Iran, mediated by China, resuming Saudi-Iranian diplomatic relations. It expressed appreciation for China's initiative to host and sponsor the Saudi-Iranian talks, complementing the Iraqi and Omani diplomatic efforts, and commended Saudi Arabia's leading role in supporting security, peace and stability, as well as pursuing diplomacy to resolve regional and international disputes. The cabinet then approved the following. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Social Services regarding the operation of social centers during the evening hours, enhancing their role by holding various activities that benefit citizens and society. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments regarding the establishment and operation of an Accounts and Property Disclosure Office. And a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to three proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet also reviewed a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and economic affairs and fiscal balance on the latest developments in the kingdom's performance and competitiveness in international reports and indicators which revealed an improvement in the kingdom's regional and international classification across many indicators. The cabinet then took note of the following. The meetings held by the Minister of Foreign Affairs on the 146th Assembly of the IPU held in the Kingdom of Bahrain, the outcomes of the 5th UN Conference on the Least Developed Countries, participation in the 159th session of the Arab League Council, participation in the Sarah Week 2023, participation in the International Tourism Board in Berlin, the calendar of events in Bahrain from March to May 2023. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Director General of the International Organization for Migration, Antonio Vittorini, at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the government's commitment to adopting policies and programs that further strengthen the kingdom's vibrant labor market and its productivity, in line with the visions of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He emphasized Bahrain's advanced and deep rooted cooperation and coordination with the International Organization for Migration at all levels. His Royal Highness noted the important role played by all members of Team. Bahrain, including citizens and residents, and furthering the kingdom's progressive development. He added that Bahrain maintaining its Tier 1 status in the U.S. State Department's Trafficking in Persons report for five consecutive years reflects the kingdom's success in adopting the best international practices in anti-trafficking efforts. During the meeting, a number of issues of common interest were reviewed, including exi existing cooperation between Bahrain and the International Organization for Migration. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. 
The National Guard Commander Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa met with the Commander of the Pakistani Army General Asim Munir at his office at the headquarters of the General Command of the Pakistani Army Forces in Rawalpindi, Pakistan. The Pakistani Army Commander welcomed His Highness, thanking him for accepting the invitation and participating in the celebrations of Pakistan Day. For his part, the National Guard Commander praised the high level of cooperation and the exchange of experience between the two sides, stressing the continuation of efforts towards strengthening bilateral relations for the interests of the two countries. The two sides also discussed a number of issues of common interest and the means to develop military cooperation and coordination between the National Guard and the Pakistani Army in all fields, and the two sides discussed regional and international issues of common concern. Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa had arrived in Islamabad on an official visit upon the invitation of the commander of the Pakistani Army to participate as a guest of honor in the celebrations of Pakistan Day. At the forefront to receive His Highness upon his arrival at the Noor Khan military base were a number of senior Pakistani Army commanders, Bahrain Ambassador to Pakistan, Mohammed Ibrahim Mohammed, and members of the embassy. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, expressed pleasure in the victory of the victorious triathlon team member Henry Schoman in Arena Games Triathlon Circe in Switzerland. His Highness affirmed that the team is moving steadily towards achieving further goals and making international achievements that promote the kingdom, which is in line with the Economic Vision 2030. He noted that the team includes outstanding members who are capable of achieving further successes. His Highness affirmed his keenness on supporting the team to make further successes and international events, wishing them success in the coming period. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, attended the wedding of Her Royal Highness Princess Iman bin Abdullah II and Jamil Alexander Thermoitis at Beit al Urdun Palace in Jordan. His Highness conveyed the congratulations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the King of Jordan, His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein and Her Majesty Queen Rani Al Abdullah. His Highness further extended his congratulations to the newly married couple. His Highness was accompanied by the President of the Court of the Crown Prince Sheikh Salman bin Ahmed bin Salman Al Khalifa. The call made by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to endorse an international agreement to criminalize religious, sectarian and racist hate speech in all its forms embodies the extent of His Majesty's interest in everything that promotes rapprochement between countries, peoples and cultures. More on this report. With wise visions for a more peaceful and stable world from the leader of humanity who is fully aware of the importance of building nations whose main foundation is peace, acceptance and respect for others. These principles that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa have always been keen to consolidate among the people of Bahrain and the peoples of the region which made Bahrain become known to the world as a country of harmony and an oasis of coexistence. The speeches of His Majesty the King always aim to preserving human dignity. The best evidence of this is His Majesty's call, which was included in his speech at the opening of the Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union to endorse an international agreement to criminalize religious, sectarian, racist and hate speech in all its forms. This only confirms His Majesty's interest in everything that promotes rapprochement between countries, peoples and cultures. The Council of Representatives Speaker and President of the 146th IPU Assembly, Ahmed Lim stressed the importance of the message conveyed by the United Nations Secretary General and his call to work in intensively to build more peaceful, inclusive and stable societies. He stressed the importance of all the topics on the agenda which requires the joint action of parliaments under the IPU to reach visions that accommodate the requirements of this stage. He said that the world is facing growing and increasingly serious challenges which require the need to take urgent measures to contain them such as climate change. He stressed the importance on prioritizing supporting the advancement of women and the empowerment of youth as well as discussing these topics in the meetings of the IPU on the permanent basis. The speaker expressed aspirations to enhance cooperation between parliaments to unify efforts to achieve a just and comprehensive peace. The Kingdom of Bahrain succeeded during the meeting of the IPU Assembly in unifying the vision of the participating parliaments regarding criminalizing defamation of religions and spreading hatred among peoples as the most prominent item on the agenda of the upcoming meetings. More in this report. 
The 146th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union held in the Kingdom of Bahrain continues to discuss a number of emergency items submitted by participating parliaments to be added to the Assembly's agenda. The Kingdom succeeded during the meeting in unifying visions and consensus among international parliaments. The most prominent emergency items are criminalizing defamation of religions and the spread of hatred among peoples, in addition to the urgent need to combat violence and establish a global fund for countries prone to natural disasters. Emergency items can be requested to be included in the Assembly's agenda by any member of the Interparliamentary Union as long as it is an important event that occurred recently and requires urgent intervention from the international community. During the Assembly, it was agreed to include a proposal submitted by the Argentine Parliament on raising awareness and calling for action regarding serious humanitarian crises to be an emergency item on the agenda of the meetings for the coming days. Participating parliamentarians in the Interparliamentary Union's 146th Assembly stressed the importance of peaceful coexistence, tolerance and diversity, as well as ensuring local parliaments take part in international debate on non-discriminatory legislations. So politicians, parliamentarians, legislators, they all have to understand the, and they have to understand the culture of peaceful coexistence. And it is quite possible. Bahrain has shown that. I met my Indian diaspora here, especially those who have come from UP and Bihar. They are so happy, they are so secure. They feel as if they are the real citizens of this Bahrain. It is a living demonstration, Bahrain is a living demonstration of peaceful coexistence. Your king has given equal rights to everybody. So this is an ideal example which any country and any parliamentarian can follow. I think it's very important that uh, local parliaments uh, uh, try to make legisla legislation not discriminative and ensure that uh, local parliament takes part in the international debate about uh, non-discriminatory legislation and, and ensures that everyone is included in their societies by, by protecting them that way. I think the most important thing is to ensure that as the legislature, in your own legislature, as you relate with communities, that you encourage people to be tolerant of one another, to be patient with one another. The, the, you have to learn to coexist. And even if there's di always diversity of views on any matters, but it is important that as a parliament, you take the lead in ensuring that you accommodate diversity of views of both members of parliament but also outside of parliament in your communities. The Bahraini Parliamentary Division delegation participated in the meeting of the IPU Standing Committee for International Peace and Security. The meeting included a general discussion titled Cyber Attacks and Crimes, New Threats to Global Security, where the delegation affirmed the keenness of the legislative authority to review the legislation in force and develop it in line with the mechanisms for addressing cyber attacks and emerging crimes. It indicated that the Bahraini legislative system includes many legislation related to electronic security and the protection of personal data to support the national framework for electronic security and combating electronic crime and strengthening cyber security. The Secretary General of the Representatives Council and Secretary of Bahrain's Parliamentary Division, Councillor Rashid Bounajma, affirmed that the issues that will be raised during the Assembly of General Secretariats will focus on strengthening coordination in the media field, approving a draft program for the Assembly and preparing a draft agenda for the next Assembly. During his participation in the opening of the current session of the Association of Secretaries General of National Parliaments, he stated that the meetings of the General Sec Secretaries are always in the interest of exchanging visions, coordinating efforts and developing the performance of the general secretaries of the councils which is reflected in supporting multilateral cooperation on the sidelines of her participation in the assembly of association of secretaries general of national parliaments the Shura council secretary general Karim al Abbasi stressed the importance of supporting parliamentary efforts that support the development of legislative and parliamentary work and highlighting the role of the legislative authority in Bahrain as one of the pillars of the national and democratic process in the kingdom which witnesses continuous development with the support of his majesty the king she noted that the legislative authority in Bahrain through the general secretariat was keen to invest modern digital technologies and supporting the work of the members of the council which is in line with the vision of Bahrain in this aspect. 
On the sidelines of the 146th IPU Assembly, a panel discussion was held on parliamentary measures related to biodiversity, titled Translating Global Commitments into National Measures. The session began with a discussion on the protection of biodiversity around the world and the dangers of a shortage of vital species on the planet. Parliamentarians participating in the meeting reviewed the environmental problems facing their countries and exchanged various ideas and proposals that aim to protect biodiversity and the planet. International legislation and policies that could help solve this environmental crisis were also discussed. The meetings reflect Bahrain's keenness through the 146th IPU Assembly to find various strategic solutions to confront climate change and protect the environment to achieve the most important goals of sustainable development. Well, this, these meetings have been vitally important. Today's meeting is in talking about the protection of our biodiversity worldwide. And we are seeing danger signs that our biodiversity is eroding, that what we are seeing ultimately is a, an erosion of species at risk. Losing those species uh, can mean a catastrophe for our planet. So the meetings over the, the last few days have been vitally important and the Bahraini government has done a fantastic job of organizing uh, so that this IPU can be a successful uh, event. But it allows us, I think, to exchange important ideas on protecting this planet's biodiversity and go back to our countries and work to implement protections for all those species at risk. Today, we're talking about biodiversity. When we think about biodiversity, it's about our livelihood, our very existence. So there is every need to protect our lands from degradation and all other forms of uh, ensuring that uh, our microbial uh, existence uh, has depleted. So it is very important that in the face of climate actions, there is the need to preserve our lands. And therefore, it requires us as parliamentarians to ensure that we are able to address these issues. The challenges we have as we spoke about, it's about availability of data to be able to appreciate how much uh, we are depleting our biodiversity, uh, the ecosystem and everything. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Halil Ansari, delivered a speech during the session on gender balance applications, achievements and legislation as part of the 146th session of the IPU Assembly. Al Ansari announced that the Council launched a guide for members of Parliament with the aim of supporting their oversight and legislative role to ensure the proper functioning of the implementation of national legislation and programs related to women's affairs, including the affirmation and development of the Bahraini model for gender balance. Through her speech, Al Ansari shed light on the Bahraini model concerned with following up the progress of Bahraini women to sustain their participation in national development and reviewed historical information indicating the leadership of Bahraini women in many areas. She said that Bahrain envisioned a national model for managing gender balance processes in which all state institutions participating in activating it and the Supreme Council for Women works as a national mechanism and reference for all women's affairs to follow up on its work. She noted that the documents are the national plan for the advancement of Bahraini women. The Secretary General of the National Initiative for Agricultural Development, Sheikh Hamaram bint Isa Al Khalifa, announced the conclusion of the Bahrain International Garden Show, which was held under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, with the support of the wife of His Majesty the King and President of Niyad Advisory Council, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, at the exhibition World Bahrain under the theme Water Regenerating Life. Sheikh Amaram noted that the exhibition has attracted nearly 45,000 visitors of various nationalities and witnessed the participation of approximately 176 exhibitors from Bahrain and various countries of the world. She expressed thanks and appreciation to all the participating exhibitors and the national companies sponsoring the show. The second Bahraini Amani Forum titled Challenges, Food Security and Mechanisms of Bilateral Cooperation to Address Them was held at Dirasat Center. The CEO of the center, Dr. Hamad al-Abdallah, delivered a speech in which he emphasized that the Bahraini Amani relations continue to grow within the GCC system, highlighting the role throughout history as an ideal model for relations with the aspirations to achieve comprehensive strategic integration. The ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to Oman, Dr. Jamal Kaabi, affirmed that this forum comes within the outputs and recommendations of the joint 
Bahraini Amani Committee, which was held in the Kingdom of Bahrain in August 2021, which emphasized the importance of cooperation and coordination between the two brotherly countries in the field of food security. The ambassador of Amman to Bahrain, Faisal Busaidi, said that this forum is an opportunity to exchange experiences and work in the field of enhancing food security to meet the challenges facing the region in general and the two brotherly countries in particular.